Hello and welcome to your Astrological Vibrations for Monday, September 24th, 2018 by Gaia Blooming. I am Mimi and our energy mantra for today is I honor the harmony of my authentic balanced self. Now let me show you. This is so perfect for this full moon energy, full moon and Aries energy. I have these cards, <laughs> the integration balance card. Unfortunately, it's in reverse, but I feel like it's in reverse because this is the work. This is the work that we're focusing on, finding harmony in finding our own personal balance in our yin and yang energies. And we need to find that balance in order to be our full authentic self. And yet here we are blooming into it with this full moon in Aries energy. This full moon really feels very powerful. Um, it is almost conjunct Chiron. We have Chiron at zero degrees Aries, just about to retrograde back into Pisces and take us back deep into the karmic stuff and to help shift all that. But with Chiron still here in Aries, especially zero degrees, that transformational degree, we are bringing that healing vibration of Chiron to the highest level of the self. Chiron and Aries is bringing a whole level of soul healing. And a big part of the soul healing that we on this planet need to be doing is the work that we have to do with the yin and accordingly with the yang. Because when our yin is out of whack and not being honored, then our yang accordingly is out of whack and not being used in its highest and best vibration. So it all is working together. But in order to really get there, we have to tune into our souls and remember who we are. So this full moon is bringing and shining a light onto that which has been hidden, these pieces of our soul, uh, these pieces of our truest I am self and bringing that, bringing that up to light. It may come with a lot of emotions. <laughs> it's definitely gonna come with nurturing energy that you need to do, work on um, accordingly with yourself, flowering, tending to your own personal garden. <laughs> um, definitely, possibly, probably some hidden feelings that need to be processed. That's all part of the pack and, package and parcel. Um, this moon, I really want to dig into the Sabian symbols, which I marked with tissues, because they're so powerful. I actually looked at Libra two degrees first, and this, like, it blew my mind. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so much of this work that we're doing right now. The Sabian symbol for Libra two degrees is the transmutation of the fruits of the past experiences into the seed realizations of the forever creative spirit. All that was manifested in the plant is gathered in the hidden seed, which in due times becomes the foundation of a new cycle of existence. The fruit decays, and for a brief moment, the released seed may be seen. Uh, this is the centralization in the self, the creative reality, after the experience of fulfillment <laughs> um, in the form of manifestation. That part's not important, but like the seed of the self, your soul is the seed of yourself and this moon is asking you to remember your soul the truth of it the seed of yourself um now what i love is the sabian symbol like you can read that right for aries two degrees where the moon is at is a comedian realize or reveals human nature um the capacity to look objectively at oneself and at others waving a white flag. <laughs> and I think that's one of the things, to take everything in stride. Yes, you are this divine being, and yet we are here having, we are spirits, having this human experience. And I think we need to, in some ways, take some of these things a little less seriously and bring back the ability to laugh, the comedian, bring back that ability to bring ourselves back into harmony. Um, I meant to mention this at the beginning, but I'm going to dig in here. I was, uh, I just did for my patrons, which you can join if you would like, I will post the link below, um, sign by sign for Sun and Libra. And where was I just going with this? Oh, 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 yes. Venus, Venus going retrograde. It's going retrograde in the sign of Scorpio and coming back into Libra. This is happening very soon. Venus rules Libra. So this is going to be a very potent retrograde as we are in the time of Libra and having it begin in Scorpio. And there is a lot of empowerment of the yin in all of us, whether you identify 
as more masculine, feminine, or androgynous, or wherever you are on the spectrum of things, no matter where you identify, you have yin energy in you, and you have yang energy in you. And right now, the yin is going through a major empowerment stage. We have to stay in the empowerment and not go into the victim. And I think part of the empowerment is maintaining the ability to laugh and the ability to understand the process of being human, which is a very intense process. Um, the ability, ability to see oneself reflected as in a mirror and eventually to laugh at the inadequacy of the form one sees, thus humor, the triumph over objective consciousness, over subjective feelings or moods, or involvement of the self. Laughter is the best medicine. And I think as we continue onward in and through these energies, it's something that we need. Now there's definitely a heaviness to this, uh, to this full moon. So we have... Um, the sun in Libra, the moon in Aries, conjunct Chiron, and Chiron, the wounded healer, asking us to tune into our soul. Meanwhile, squaring these energies, oh, good old Saturn and Capricorn, still there at two degrees. We also have Vesta there for good measure, which we'll dig into in just a second. But that Saturn energy, society has been knocking on our door. And our ability to find the harmony within ourselves is probably going to be most challenged by what society thinks of us bringing forth our authentic soul selves. And I will tell you, in my experience with my family, they do not like it. <laughs> but okay, what can I do? I can be miserable and isolated. Or I could be true to my heart and I could be true to myself. And I think we're being faced with this every day more and more. And it's not always easy to make that choice. And there may be some times where you choose that harmony outside of yourself to keep things copathetic, to keep yourself safe. And there's no shame in doing that. But at least bring the realization to those places where you're doing that and do your best to nurture your soul self in and through this. To nurture Vesta, that Vesta energy that's right there with Saturn. Vesta, oh, it reminds me of the Talmud. There's this uh, quote in the Talmud that said, every blade of grass has an angel that whispers over it, grow, grow. For this case, in this astro, Vesta. Vesta's there with Saturn, and she's like, grow, Grow, grow into your potential, grow into your purpose, grow into knowing the divinity of your light so you do not have to be afraid of the path that you came to walk. So Vesta's right there being like, I know you're scared, <laughs> but yet you can make these choices. Your work with this two degree energy is to firmly nurture yourself in and through this. What else is very potent in and through this is the fact that we also have Lilith. Oh, Lilith is chiming in. Lilith is sextiling the moon and trining the sun in and through this. She is hanging out at, oh, she's also sextiling Chiron. She's hanging out at zero degrees. And Lilith, Lilith is the voice within us that's like, you can go your own way. You can choose that path. You can choose your authentic, balanced self. You can choose the harmony of yourself rather than choosing this harmony of those outside of you. It's not easy, but Lilith shows us the way to go our own way. So we have power players coming in. And Lilith in Aquarius, along with Mars in Aquarius, reminds us of the lesson that sometimes our first step is not necessarily taking the action, but a lot of times the first step is aligning with the vibration. So this vibration may be that of uh, flowering, <laughs> blooming, integration, knowing what feels harmonic to the self, and just aligning with that, and then letting those actions unfold from there. With this moon, again, realize the, the fruits of the past, these things from the past, like the saving symbol, there may be some old stuff coming up. That's okay. It's part of the clear out in order to help shift us, and in order for us to remember what that harmonic place comes, comes to. Our work is not to be comparing ourselves, our work is to be true to ourselves. And if you are feeling this isolation, chances are there are places where you're still choosing that outer harmony instead of harmony within yourself. I have one more card from the Divine Feminine deck. I just want to remind you, come join me on Patreon. Um, I'm going to be pulling cards, I believe, for this full moon. So 
Yeah, come join me. I have Perpetua, the saint of authenticity. And she says, I am my authentic self in all circumstances. When your soul selects her card, when we find the courage to be true to who we are, a vitality returns to us, a voice that is both moving and compelling simply because it is authentic. St. Perpetua's words in her very personal and emotional diary were so impactful that 200 years later, the renowned church father August, Augustine, Augustine would write about their beauty and truth. St. Perpetua suggests that there is no greater power than choosing to remain our authentic self in all circumstances. She's that person who remained loyal to her soul, and she urges us through her example to embrace the power of being authentic now. Even in the face of death, you don't have to be a martyr, by the way. You don't have to martyr yourself. I think sometimes we get caught up in that old paradigm and that fear. You don't have to be a martyr in these days to be true to yourself. And there's arguing going on in my head about that, but... <laughs> Unfortunately, there are places in this world where you do have to be a martyr, but at least here, where we are right now. Okay, I'm not going into that now. Empowerment, vibration, connect. Anyway, she urges us through her example to embrace the power of being authentic now. Even in the face of death, she courageously held fast to her truth that she was Christian. Her right hand reveals the Christ mudra. That's actually interesting because I've heard that that's actually the peace mudra. That this is divisive and this is actual peace. So interesting. The Christ mudra. She also reminds us that in journal writing, our journal writing can be a sacred act of returning to ourselves, so much agree, of listening to the soul voice inside of us and going inward to find our answers. Perpetua is a call to a journal writing practice, even if it's just to record our dreams each morning, even if it's just to reveal the truth of the harmonics within you and the truth of your personal authenticity. The inner voice that greets us as we write strengthens our authenticity. That voice becomes a light, a fire, and calls to us and claims us as we dare to live out its truth. Soul voice meditation. What is the truest statement I can say about who I am? I am the soul of the soul of the universe and my name is love. I think that is the truest soul statement that any of us can really say. Thank you, Rumi. <laughs> Intention. I am my authentic self in all circumstances. So here you go, full moon in Aries. I guess one last thing I didn't mention, full moon in Aries can bring up the aggressive, angry energy. And you know, if you are faced with that, or you feel that in yourself, that there is a lack of authenticity going on. There is a lack of harmony because of that lack of authenticity. So it is your work to find that har harmony within yourself. And if somebody's doing that in your life, hold compassion for them for doing that. So that Hopefully they can find their shift into their authenticity as well. That is it for today. Go check me out on Patreon. You can always book a reading. Email me, meclark at gmail.com. And besides that, the better it gets, the better it gets. And there is enough love in the world for you. Namaste.